Tonight, I wanna to take you through one of the biggest issues I see when it comes to people's nutrition, which is not getting in enough protein. So, I'm gonna take you through my top foods for increasing your protein intake, so hopefully we can solve this problem and also go over why protein is so important. The number one thing I see when I do people's nutrition, when I look at their nutrition, they give me a list of foods that they're eating throughout the day, is that the majority of Americans are not intaking enough protein to speed up their metabolism, reduce body fat, and to maintain and gain the lean muscle that they want. Rule of thumb is basically, we wanna shoot for one gram of protein per lean pound of body mass. So that means if you're 200 pounds, you have 180 pounds of lean mass, your muscle, your bones, your organs, all that good stuff, excluding your fat, you should be shooting for 180 grams of protein. If you're 400 pounds and you have, let's say 250 pounds of lean mass, then you're shooting for about 250 grams of protein a day. Protein is responsible for building lean muscle, repairing lean muscle, and maintaining lean muscle. So if we're not getting in enough protein, that means our muscles may start to atrophy. And since muscle is the most anabolic compound on our body, if we start to lose lean muscle mass, that also means your metabolism is decreasing. So I talk to people every single day that they're getting older and older and they keep putting on more body fat and they think their metabolism is slowing down, when in reality, they're, not, they're just not getting in enough protein to maintain their lean muscle mass and keep their metabolism where it's at. People do not consider or even know about how thermogenic protein is. Thermogenesis basically means how much energy does your body require to break that food group down. Now protein is the most thermogenic compound out of all three macronutrients, which means it takes your body a ton more energy to actually digest protein and it uses, it is actually burning calories to break protein down in your system. And so even though protein has four calories per gram, since it takes your body so much energy to break that protein down, there have been studies out there that show after you digest protein, it actually comes out to only about two calories per gram. So when it comes to protein, my favorite choices of protein is going to be red meats. I love red meat. Um, red meat also is the most micronutrient dense food that is out there today. It has more micronutrients than any vegetables that you're going to find. I believe that the more wild the animal is, the more gamey an animal is, the higher the protein content and the lower the fat content is gonna be. So my very favorite is gonna be this pasture-raised ground venison right here. My second choice is gonna be going for some ground bison if I'm doing ground red meat. And then my third choice is gonna be going for some lean ground beef. And there's different ratios of fats and protein on all of these. You just gotta check the back packaging to kinda check out your protein to fat ratios. Let's talk about birds. So we got ground chicken breast and we also have ground turkey as well right here. These are, yeah, my top two um, protein sources when it comes to birds. So um, same with ground turkey and ground chicken. That's gonna tell you how lean these meats are. So usually, like we got ground chicken breast here, that's gonna be the leanest ground meat you're gonna find on the shelves. That's 99% lean, 1% fat, basically all protein. Next we're moving on to seafood. One of my favorite ways to get more protein in is from, yeah, things that come in right out of the ocean, fresh onto the plate. So when it comes to seafood, I just really wanna make sure that it's not farm raised fish that I'm eating because the macronutrient ratio and the protein ratio on farm-raised fish is gonna be a lot lower in protein than wild-caught salmon, wild-caught anything. So, leanest fish are gonna be your white fish, okay? They're gonna be your halibut, your cod, your tilapia. Um, going to kind of our more fatty fish here, we're gonna be going, to, the fattiest is gonna be the salmon, um, the salmon category. And then if we get into our tunas, like our ahi, our yellowfin, um, our tunas are also gonna be very, very lean, very high protein, very little fat on those, but they're also gonna have a higher mercury content. So you just wanna make sure 
we're not consuming massive amounts of tuna because of the mercury. Um, one of my favorite, you know, breakfasts or just snacks throughout the day has to do with Greek yogurt or just yogurt in general, okay? Greek yogurt um, is basically known for having very little fat content, anywhere from like 0% to 2%, and then a very high protein content. So usually around 16 grams to 18 grams of protein per two thirds cup to one cup of yogurt, which is not that much. So if you're having two cups of yogurt per day, very easy to up your protein intake by anywhere from 30 to 40 grams of additional protein. Another one of my favorite ways to increase protein intake is through cottage cheese. Same thing with the yogurt. You can find cottage cheese that is anywhere from usually 0% all the way up to whole fat cottage cheese. So again, you get to control how much fat you want compared to your protein ratios here, okay? The one I just grabbed is 2% fat cottage cheese and in half a cup of this, we have 14 grams of protein, which means you eat one cup of cottage cheese, you're eating 28 grams of protein, only 2.5 grams of fat, and only six grams of carbohydrates. Now, if you wanna spice your cottage cheese up a little bit, make it taste a little bit better, there are ways, but it's gonna add some carbohydrates in there, but I love putting pineapple. Um, you can also add in some mangoes, some raspberries, whatever fruit you think goes good with cottage cheese, or my personal favorite is just pouring some maple syrup into the cottage cheese and just eating it straight out of the container. All right, so let's talk eggs. So we always hear that eggs are a phenomenal source of protein, and they are, but the only caveat to that is that there's also a lot of fat just in one egg. So when you eat an egg, you're actually getting more calories from fat than you are from protein. So a standard egg has about eight grams of protein, six grams of fat, but since fat is twice as calorie dense, as protein is, more calories from the fat. So eggs are a great source of protein. If you want to cut down on the fat, all you have to do is buy a container of egg whites or just throw out some of the yolks and just use the egg white of the egg and then you're gonna be getting in pure protein without the fat. I like doing whole eggs personally. I don't like wasting the yolk, but it's up to you. All right, for the vegan vegetarian homies out there, I'm gonna give you my best piece of advice here, which is buying field roast products. So these are vegan vegetarian sausages, and I just eat these occasionally because I think they're really freaking good, and if I wanna cut down on meat for some reason and just take a little break, this is my vegan sausage of choice. So in one of these sausages, you have 18 grams of protein, 16 grams of carbs, and only eight grams of fat. This is the smoked apple and sage one, and I have put a lot of field roast sausages into my belly. So give them a try. But my favorite pick when it comes to finding something sweet that's gonna satisfy cravings but also have a good amount of protein in it is gonna be Halo Top ice cream right here. So in one pint, the cookie dough, we have 360 calories. In the um, vanilla bean, there's only 290 calories in entire pints. So let's talk about protein in here. In the vanilla, Per pint, we have 19 grams of protein. Per pint of the cookie dough, we have 19 grams of protein as well. So, you're sitting down after a hard day, and you're like, man, I got 20 more grams of protein I need to take in. You could eat one pint of these guys, up your calories just by a few hundred, and hit your protein goal. So, I wanna go over kind of the best whole like meat but also just minimally processed sources when it comes to protein. This brand called Epic right here has amazing product. We have 16 grams of protein. Another amazing brand that I like um, that I pick up at Costco or Whole Foods is called Chomps. They make these meat sticks. In one of these sticks right here, there is nine grams of protein. They got a bunch of amazing flavors. This is the jalapeno one, but basically any of our jerkies here any of our you know, grass-fed beef sticks, our venison sticks, chicken strips, this is an easy on-the-go option that you can keep in your car and help increase your protein intake wherever you are. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about protein bars. So now we're getting to even more processed, you know, usually on our bars here, there's gonna be anywhere from eight to over 50 ingredients per bar. 
but that doesn't mean they don't have a good protein content. And so, so two of my favorite bars are gonna be One Bars as well as Quest Bars when it comes to protein content. These bars usually have anywhere from about 20 grams of protein to about 24 grams of protein, smaller amounts of fat, um, but when you are finding a protein bar, there's some good ones, but there's also a lot of bad ones. So a lot of times you hear nuts are a great source of protein, but are they really? Kind of and kind of not. So if we take almond butter or peanut butter, for example, which are just crushed up almonds, crushed up peanuts, no added oils, no added ingredients, for two tablespoons of almond butter, you're getting in seven grams of protein, but you're getting in 17 grams of fat. 17 grams of freaking fat. That is so much. That's so much fat. Just so you know, that's a hundred, like basically 190 calories of fat right there. Okay, so yes, you can use nut butters to increase your protein intake a little bit, but you're gonna be increasing your fat intake exponentially by doing that. So kind of your choice on if you're willing to sacrifice a lot of fat to get a little bit more protein in. A lot of companies are adding protein to, you know, regular products that usually do not have protein in them. So for example, we have this RX oatmeal that has 12 grams of protein in it. Now, regular oatmeal in this size usually has maybe two to four grams. So you can find products nowadays that have additional protein added to them. This is an amazing one because the only ingredients in here are oats, almonds, dates, egg whites, and apples. So very natural, one ingredient foods all added together to increase the amount of protein you're taking in in your oatmeal. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to increase the amount of protein that you're getting in per day through your diet. Gave you some easy options, gave you some whole food options, and we gave you my favorite dessert option, the Halo Top. So remember, rule of thumb, one gram of protein per lean poundage of body mass. If you have any questions about other sources of protein, comment below. If you enjoyed this video, you gained some knowledge, hit the like button, and we'll see you next time on the next video.